All right, folks, so welcome back. This will be part two of the genetic composition of the Scots. Now, have a look here at these four kingdoms which make up the land of Scotland as we know it. Plus, we have the Antonine Wall and Hadrian's Wall, if we go into it here. So on this website, Electric Scotland, it goes into it, only early kings, and you can check this website out for yourself. This is way too detailed for me to cover here. I'll be here all day, but, you know, have a look into it on Electric Scotland. Scotland, a concise history making a kingdom. There's also this article from the Daily Mail. Scotland's genetic map reveals the country's natives live in the same Dark Age kingdoms created by their ancestor ten centuries ago. Loyalty of Scots to their Pictish roots is still present today after centuries. Scots still live in the same part of the country as their Dark Age ancestors and found Orkney and Shetland had the highest levels of Norwegian ancestry outside of Scandinavia, which is not surprising. Let's have a look at this article. A widespread analysis of Scotland's genetic heritage has found the inhabitants are still living in the same regions as their ancestors. Loyalty of Scots to their Pictish roots is still present. Da 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 da. And we have these clusters. So, what year did this come out? Does it say? It seems to be fairly recent. Ah, okay, 3rd of September 2019. So, if we have a look at this map here, you can see where the Kingdom of Northumbria used to be. And they would have been Anglo Saxons. <laughs> According to this article, they still are. There's the Strathclyde Britons, the Doriada. Fits in perfectly with the map that I showed you uh, of my own ancestry, my own DNA, Pictland and Caledony. Uh, Caledonia, whatever you, I don't know quite how you pronounce it, Caledon, I, <laughs> whatever. You get the point anyway. So most of the Norwegian like ancestry in Britain and Ireland appear to originate from Hordaland and Sog Og Fjordane counties in western Norway excuse me if I'm mispronouncing it this is considered to be the homeland of many Vikings who set sail for pastors new analysis also unearthed that Orkney and Shetland had the highest levels of Norwegian ancestry da 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 wish I'd been through all that Isle of Man has its origins in Scotland really I didn't know that pretty interesting and then it goes into the whole thing about the Picts so they were a collection of tribes and one thing that caught my eye um, was, where is it? Yeah, the Roman name for the people, the Picti, means the painted people. It's not known what they called themselves. Well, actually, that's not really true. I know what their proper name was. Their proper name was the Iberi, as in Iberia, Iberian, you know, uh, the, the part of Europe where Spain and Portugal are is uh, known as Iberia in some circles. Historically, it was called Iberia. So, other connections between the Spanish and the Portuguese and the Northeastern Scots? That's quite a good question to ask. I'm not really sure that there is, but it's interesting that they both seem to go by the same name. But I'll cover the whole thing with the pics in later videos. But yeah, their original name was Iberi. That was what they called themselves. Now, if we have a look here, this is Scottish origins. Oh, well, that's quite clever. Use your DNA to discover your Scottish heritage. And we've got this map here that, you know, points out the genetic diversity of the Scots. Very similar. The Picts in the northeast, the Norse in the north, the Scots in the west, the Britons, where the Kingdom of Strathclyde would have been, the Angles, Anglo Saxons, where the Kingdom of Northumbria once was, and there's a small. Gaelic, you know, corner down here, and the Norse scales. So it's saying here, the Royal House of Scotland sprang from the kings of Scots, who constituted only one of the six peoples inhabiting the modern lands of Scotland. I said it was four kingdoms, but I also said that might be overly simple. It turns out I was right. Uh, yet when Kenneth, son of Alpin, united Picts and Scots, and later when the Anglian southeast the British southwest and the lands of the Gales and Galloway were incorporated into the kingdom. This royal line of the Scots appears to have 
accepted without difficulty by the other peoples. It is a remarkable fact that only, not only the royal line, but the complete history and mythology of the Scots was accepted as the common heritage of all the people from the Tweed to the Pentland Firth. By the reign of Alexander III, 1241 to 1286, it is clear that Picts, Britons, Norse, Angles, Galloway, Gaels and Normans, even the Normans, had all laid aside their own memories of the past and had come to regard the past of the Scots as their heritage, as the Scottish kingship symbolised the acceptance of a common past it was an important underlying factor in Scottish life. It was one of the few things contributed by West Highland Scotland to the Scottish state and one of the very few things that linked the Highlanders with the Lowlanders. That's right, I mean, if you're a tourist visiting Edinburgh for the first time or Scotland and, you know, you've been binge-watching Braveheart and you think the whole thing, the whole country is like, Scot um, like what you see in um, Braveheart, the depiction of the Scots as all being Highlanders is completely false. In fact, people in Edinburgh would never have even seen anyone wearing a kilt up until probably the 17 or 1800s. Okay, it must have amazed some contemporaries when a Highland bard at the inauguration of Alexander III hailed in Gaelic this anglicised French-speaking king as their direct descendant of King Fergus I, the founder of Scotland. And then it goes into the whole genetic... Um, thing so there you have it folks um the convergence of the saxons the normans the gales the picts the dariada which is the as i've said proper name for the scots you know they've all come together in this sort of convergence over time it didn't happen overnight you know um although the picts seemed to disappear from history pretty quickly you know um, it's a little bit eyebrow raising that one they seem to be there one minute and not there the next and then you have the kingdom of scotland all of a sudden just springing up you know um it baffles a lot of historians like what happened to the picks well nothing happened to them maybe they started using their own name for once instead of the roman nickname <laughs> you know but you know scotland is a melting pot of different people from different kingdoms who all came together over time was it always smooth sailing? I would suggest probably not. Uh, did everyone join willingly? Well, probably not. I mean, look at the European Union nowadays. There are countries in the EU who are not very happy about being in it. There's a lot of people in these countries who are discontent about being part of the EU. And Britain has left, you know. Well, officially, we'll see how that really goes down the line. But, you know, um, I wrote about the EU in a dissertation about 12 years ago. Let me know if you want me to cover that on this channel. Uh, I was very pro-EU until I actually started learning about it. And then I very quickly changed my mind. But I'm not going to get into politics here. But, you know, whatever you have these different groups and different races coming together, it's not always going to be smooth sailing right away. But... I think it's pretty much been put to bed now. I think I've pretty much proved it that the Normans were just one of many groups who came together to form the Kingdom of Scotland and the Normans did not take over this country. You know, at least not in the sense that you might think. I mean, politically, were there pro-Norman pro factions in Scotland? Absolutely. Yes, there were. And it's also a fact that Robert the Bruce, beyond dispute, had Norman blood. As did a lot of the lieutenants, by the way, who followed Wallace willingly. So if they came in with this superior smug attitude, as seems to be insinuated by Ged, you know, then he kind of has to answer the question, why was it that a lot of Wallace's loyal followers, you know, had Norman ancestry when Wallace himself had none to speak of? Not in comparison to them. The whole idea that Wallace had Norman blood, I find very questionable. Wallace and Bruce were cousins, but that's on the Britonic side, you know. Uh, they, were, they were both Strathclyde Britons. That's how they were related. It was nothing to do with Norman blood. I don't think Norm, um, Norman, I don't think Wallace actually had Norman blood. Yet, you know, if you look at the, the surnames of, like, his loyal followers who went with him into war, into countless battles, you will find that they had Norman ancestry, you know, and they willingly joined him. So, you know, 
the Normans, you have gay skeptics saying the Normans didn't fit in at all. Okay, well, what the hell are they doing following William Wallace into war then for? If they didn't blend in, if they were off by themselves, if they were looking down their nose at the ordinary Scottish peasants and all this sort of thing, then <laughs> that brings up the question, why were some of Wallace's most loyal followers Normans? <laughs> you know, that is something. Like Adam Wallace, for example. Adam Wallace was a full-blooded cousin of both William Wallace and Robert the Bruce, which suggests that he may have had Norman ancestry. Just something to think about there. But anyway, thanks for watching this video and be sure to leave your thoughts and comments below. All right, folks, so in this video, following up from the genetic composition of the Scots part two, I'm gonna be looking at some of the surnames and therefore ancestry of some of William Wallace's most loyal followers. Starting off with Boyd. This was uh, the surname of Robert Boyd, who was like a right-hand man to Wallace in many encounters. And it's saying here the Boyd surname in Scotland as a habitational name deriving from the Isle of Bute, located in the Firth of Clyde. There was also a family of this name of Norman origin that was first found in Shropshire, where they were granted land by Duke William of Normandy. So, were the Boyds Norman? Well, some of them definitely were, that's for sure. Was Robert Boyd of Norman extraction? Quite possibly. Very possibly, in fact. But I do know one for sure who was, and that's Sir John de Graham. Now, Sir John de Graham was one of the greatest champions to fight alongside William Wallace. He died at the Battle of Falkirk in 1298, and when you read the account... In the book, in William Wallace, Robin Hood Revealed, Wallace weeps openly when John the Graham is found dead. You know, because that was, he was like his brother. So this whole insinuation with the Ged Skeptic that the Normans considered themselves better than everyone else. Well, Sir John the Graham was one of the first, one of the very first followers of William Wallace. He wasn't the first, but he was amongst the first. You know, and he joined Wallace willingly. He fought side by side with him in many battles. He died in battle with honour. You know, he died an honourable death. And all the men who were surrounding Wallace, you know, saw him cry, saw him weep openly for this man who was as a brother to him. And bear in mind, William Wallace had no Norman ancestry, none that I'm aware of. And yet, what do we see here? The Graham is thoroughly woven into the intricate tapestry of Scottish history, find its origins with the proud Norman people. And here is a knight, Sir John the Graham, who's following Wallace before he was even knighted. Here's a Norman knight who's following the second-born son of a minor noble at that and proudly fought with him for years. I could make whole videos about that man. And probably will, actually. Another follower of Wallace was Cleland, though I don't know his first name. But it comes up a lot in the story. He was a Strathclyde Briton by descent. And also there's Patrick Auchinleck, who also is from uh, Strathclyde Britonic origin. There's also Tom Halliday, also Strathclyde Briton. And Campbell, Earl Campbell. Uh, he was also one of the uh, main followers and supporters of Wallace throughout his campaigns. He was Strathclyde Britain as well. And interestingly, Sir John Ramsay. Here it says that the surname Ramsay comes from the place name Ramsay, which is derived from the Old English uh, Ramsa and Egg, which means wild garlic. And it's saying that the surname Ramsay was first found in Huntington. So it's English in origin and yet, you know, Sir John Ramsay fought faithfully alongside Wallace for years as well. You know, uh, the Ramsay family, you know, they proudly fought alongside William Wallace and Robert the Bruce here. We can see that as well. So there we have it. 